Now, there's only one last thing you need before you can have a go at this and practice it, and that's to extend this with the chain rule. But before I do that, are there any questions? Like, there's a lot of concepts on the board. Adidas, you want some, you, you're giving me the, I need clarification on a thing face. Um, yeah, yeah you, please, ask the question. Yeah, I'm going to just have that um, second one. The black one here? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. I did, I did go through it quickly, okay? What are we trying to do on this black curve here, okay? What I'm trying to say is, what is the gradient of this y equals log x curve? What is the gradient doing? Okay. Now what I notice is, I'm just going to go from left to right, if that's okay. At the leftmost part of the graph, it's increasing, and it's doing it real fast. It's really steep, is the colloquial way I would say it, right? So when you have a line that has a steep gradient, that means the gradient is very large and positive, yeah? Large and positive. So this is a high value for the derivative. So I've just put an x up that's quite high. But as I progress from left to right, do you notice, well, this spot here is not as steep as this spot over here. Is that okay? It's not as steep. And in fact, the more I go to the right, not as steep, not as steep, not as steep. So that means that the derivative, the gradient, should be lower and lower and lower. It's still positive because my original graph is still going up, but it's slowing down. Okay? So that's why the black graph, which tells me the gradient, it's still all of these values are positive. They're above the x-axis, but they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which indicates that this guy is slowing down, slowing down forever, in fact. Is that a better explanation? Or, yeah, are you still, what do you reckon? What do you think of that, Osha? How do you get y equals log of x? Ah, that is a very good question. How did I come up with this, okay? Now, the short answer is, um, at the moment, off the information that we've got, I kind of guessed, like this is the only graph that I know about that basically does this. But you're right to ask, well, why this? Why not like two over x? Or why not one over x squared? That also looks roughly the same, okay? Now, this is 1 comma 0 and this would be 1 comma 1. So they intersect somewhere else. Okay? Now, as to like, the actual answer to your question, I will show you that. And it's actually really lovely. You all know enough to prove that it's 1 over x. But the reason I'm not showing you that is because, um, well, number one, the course doesn't require it. And some of you are just like, I, I want to use the rule and I want to get used to it. Uh, and that's, that's fine, honestly, from the point of view of the course. So, I want to let you have this result, and you can use it even if you're not curious as to why exactly, but I will show all of you why exactly, because you can get it, and I think you'll be really satisfied by it. Okay? Does that, does that answer your question, sort of? Yeah. I know it's not that satisfying. I'm not that satisfied to stop here either, but I, I'm going to show you what you need to know, and then I'll show you a bit extra after that. Okay, may I move to this next bit? Can I get some nods? Yes, thumbs up? Okay, fantastic, thank you. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this log x, and we're going to look at, well, what if it's not log of just x? What, it's, what if it's log of some other thing, right? It could be log of 2x plus 1. It could be log of 2 sine x. It could be log of anything. Can we still differentiate that? And the answer is, yes, we can. I'll show you how. If we have, let's consider, some new function, y equals log of something else. I'm going to call it log of f of x, some other function, and I really don't care what other function it is. I'm going to do chain rule to this thing, and I'll walk you through it step by step, and we can work out what the result is, okay? The first thing is I need to give this guy um, a name. I'm going to call this u. I actually don't need to give it a name, but it's going to be a little easier for you to see if I do. So therefore, I can write y equals log of u, and from this, like, I can just differentiate that. That's the result that we just did, right? dy on, it's not dx this time, because I don't have any x's in this equation, it's going to be du. Yeah? What's dy on du? I've got the result just up above. One. It's 1 over, yeah, I don't have x's, I've got u's. So I'm going to say 1 over u. Is that okay? So this is me just rehearsing this result, just with different pronumerals. Okay? So that's good. I've got u being equal to f of x. So in the same way, I can now take this guy and differentiate. That's how chain rule works. You remember we've got a chain of derivatives, one after the other. So here I'm going to do du on dx. Okay. That's a bit weird because I, I don't know what f of x is. Like I said, it could be anything. So I'm just going to say, like, what do we call the derivative of f of x? It has like a label that we give on it. f dash x. f dash x. Here we go. 
So now see these guys, these two derivatives, I can, as the name of the rule suggests, I can chain them together in sequence. I can say dy on du times du on dx. That's just these two things, right? So I'm just going to write them down. 1 over u f dash x. Let me hit pause. How are you feeling so far? Is that OK? Were you all right with how I differentiated this, just using this rule we just established? Are you OK with how I differentiated this? Like, that's just what the derivative of this is called. I, I don't know what f is, so I can't call it anything else. Is that all right? And then I've just substituted in, OK? I'm almost at the end here. Um, chain rule, right? I've got these two du's, one on the top, one on the bottom. So what can I do with them? I can, I can cancel them out, right? They go. So I get left with what on the left-hand side? dy on dx. That's the actual derivative I want. dy on dx. OK. Then I have this fraction times f dash x. So this f dash x, I'm going to write it on the top of the fraction. Is that OK? 1 times f dash is just f dash. And then on the bottom, I could write u. That's what I've got from the previous line. But have a look carefully, just a couple of lines above. I defined u right here. See that? That's u. Okay? So I can replace u with what, what I can get rid of all the u's. I, I put them in to help me solve it, but I don't need them. So it's just f of x. So what have I got here? When you've got just a log function, log of x. When you differentiate it, you get the hyperbola, 1 over x. But actually, if you've got the log of anything, the log of anything, its derivative is whatever the derivative of that is, which is f dash, divided by whatever that is. Okay, so let's use some of the examples that we can see over there. I'm just going to make myself a little tiny bit of space. Let's suppose I had, what was, what was question four? Okay. Let's suppose I had the derivative of log x squared minus 3. That's what I put up in the power, yeah? That's what we had before? OK, let's do it. There's f. That's the thing being taken log off, right? So I want f dash on f. What's f dash in this case? It's just 2x, yeah? Because I don't need to worry about this negative 3, so it's just 2x. There's the f dash on the top. What goes on the bottom? Just, just that, f of x. So it's x squared minus 3, and you're done. That's it. Um, these derivatives of exponentials and logs, they're super useful, but they're also really easy to work out. They're not hard. You just have to use fairly straightforward rules. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit pause. Um, these questions here work through all of these. Okay. So I'm going to let you have a go and have a play. Okay. But some of you are going to have the same question Alicia had, which is, yeah, but all of this depends on this. And we just kind of looked at a picture and sort of guessed, right? Well, I'm going to give you the proof for it. And like I said, it relies on stuff that you all actually know. Um, if you're really clever about it, you could work it out yourself. But I will help you out. I'll hold your hand just because I think it's satisfying to know why things are the case. 